Welcome back, everybody. Of course, you know me. My name is Dr. Keith McNally, and this is Coach's Corner. I'm here with Deborah Hollick, and we're going to take a really un- we're going to have a really unique conversation. I've never had this conversation before. I've always wanted to know what my thoughts look like. Now we're going to find out because Deborah's figured out how to find out what our thoughts look like. Let's take that journey together. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Keith. It's a pleasure to be here. Always so, fun to be with you. It, this is going to be really unique because I am one curious, two at a loss, and three, we just got to dive into that conversation. So where did this all begin in terms of figuring out what thoughts look like? How did it start? Well, years ago, many years ago, I was blessed to have a mentor by the name of Dr. Agnes Crowley. And she was the most giving, loving person and fun that you could imagine. And she was curious. She was curious about energy and thoughts and nutrition and so many things. And uh, she was basically not the inventor, but certainly one of the modern pioneers of Curlian photography. And Curlian photography has been around a long time. Some people don't believe in it. Some of us think it's amazing. And if for nothing else, it really, really gives food for thought. So can we, can you define, give us an idea of what that is? Well, Dr. Krawick would take pictures with a special camera, a Curlian camera, that would take four exposures on one film. It was a Polaroid film. And we all have... And, you know, we all have similar thoughts in a day, one would think, you know, hopefully we all have some normal thoughts. Oh, what, what am I going to get at the grocery store? Should I use this coffee cup for that one? You know, we kind of all have mundane things. Time to brush my teeth, you know. And then we hopefully, I hope anyway, that everybody in the whole world has some happy thoughts, at least one or two a day. And then... I think we all have a whole lot of those frustrating ones or those ones that really make us a little annoyed. (laughs) And then again, the last exposure that we would do would be uh, a a sort of a content thought or your God self thought or just something that you felt was a perfect thought for you and whatever that was. And when Dr. Krawick was taking the Uh, pictures she didn't know what the person was thinking and the first time uh, and this was very early on in my meeting with her actually I I didn't she wasn't my mentor yet and she took my picture based upon those thoughts and I have to tell you Keith it was really really ugly the pictures are the of the the fingers and they're, you know, the four fingers, the four fingers on the hand, and you move it down a little bit. And so each, there's an aura around each finger, hmm. the tips of your fingers. So mine was black and broken and just really, really not pretty. And I didn't think my energy was that low, but I could relate to every one of those things. And I could see why it was showing up that way. And I knew that right then and there, I I need to make some big changes in my life. So it was a life altering experience for me. How does that then bring us to a conversation of a wow moment? And wow is an acronym for you um, because it's kind of the centerpiece of what you do and it's how you make an impact, not only in your own life, but in the lives of others. How do we how do we jump into that part of the conversation? Well, <laughs> believe me, when I saw that picture, I went, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. And it wasn't a good wow. <laughs> but like you say, wow is an acronym for me. And it for me, it stands for wonder, openness, and wisdom. Wow. And so how it ties in with the Curlian photography is because it really does become a wow moment when people see what 
thought energy looks like based upon thoughts. Like you can, there are cameras that show the whole body auras and things like that. That's based on energy as well. And that's extremely valuable too. This was very different. So the wow for me is, and what, what it did for me was it really made me wonder. It made me wonder how I was going to change and, you know, uh, it opened me up to change. And I think that was key hmm. because we have to acknowledge and be open to change before we can do any of it. We won't take the steps otherwise. And then the wonder of it was how different my life became. I think from based on what you've already told me, you were so distraught by what you saw in that picture that it forced you to do things differently. Is that what it I'm did? Hearing? Yeah, it, it did. And, and I became so um, committed, <laughs> I think would be the word that I became a Carlian uh, photography practitioner. And so I know that my work that I've done has helped many people and, you know, still is. Unfortunately, I can't take the physical pictures anymore because they've stopped making the film. Oh. But I have hundreds of them that I can show people. And based on that, people can get a real good measurement. And that's what I like to call it. It's a measurement tool. So once you have a basic, you know, a basic uh, mark, and, and you're the only one who can judge that, right? Mm. And then you can judge all the time. Okay, where what, what what's my energy looking like here? If I was to take a picture right now, is my picture looking nice? Is it looking full of energy? Are my auras thick and, and bright? Or am I just thinking really awful? And so people can shift. So talk to me about what good energy should look like, because I think if people had an idea of what that energy looked like, they would strive to go in that direction, for lack of better words. What does good energy look like? Well, when I do do my uh, speaking and, you know, trainings and things like that with corporate, I actually show them pictures of good energy. And I'm really proud to say that my energy doesn't look anything like it did. <laughs> so, you know, good energy or happy energy or, you know, balanced energy, the halos around your fingertips are thick and they're white and they're, they're balanced on all levels, you know, with little as with less energy on the frustration one and you can see more energy come through the other ones and that's when you know that you're you know you're more on track so so again you're you're piquing my curiosity with every word that you say because you said this is energy that is being at the hands at the fingertips and you said it's white halo energy so circles around my fingertips yeah they're little like the aura that's around your fingertips Okay. Right? It's the same as the aura we have around our bodies, right? right. And, and uh, again, some people agree with that and some people don't. I'm not here to, you know. Yeah, th this isn't an argument yeah. against, for yeah. or against. I want to know about the energy because that seems very, very specific type of energy. And so if that is there, can you feel it? Like, would I know it? Or do I have, really have to trust on my thoughts? to say this is this is positive energy well i think i think we know when we feel you know we all know that when we're thinking better thoughts on a regular basis i mean we all have ups and downs i mean right right nobody's going to think happy thoughts every minute of every day it's not possible we we wouldn't be able to make choices if that was the case right we got to have some conscience the contrast doesn't always have to be bad, right. but we, you know, we know when our energy is up there. So when, when you think a thought and thoughts are going by like this, right, it's quick. And when, you know, we take the camera, it wasn't necessarily a thought that was a conscious thought. It was a subconscious thought and that registers very quickly. So you'd know 
by how you feel because you have a pretty good idea. But once you see the pictures and the contrasting of both and some in between with different things, then um, you know you get a pretty good measurement tool for yourself. And it's a visual, it's just a visual measurement tool. Well, then let's talk about the use and application of this tool because in essence, you want to help people make very clear and specific changes in their life because one, you have to answer the because why, and two, I need you to answer what type of changes do people actually make? What do you see happening when they actually recognize, when people recognize that they need to change? Well, first of all, I what I want to happen when I'm doing my my trainings and my speaking and presentations on this is I want people to have that wow moment. I want people to within themselves say, oh, what do I want my energy to look like? Do I need to be cleaning up my thoughts? Exactly. Because I think I'm more over here <laughs> and I really want to be over there. <laughs> so right there, that's the first thing. I want them to have that wow moment like I did right. so that they within themselves become conscious of wanting to change how they think. And they will catch themselves. So I guess that's that's what I basically want to share with them and want them to walk away with is, you know, okay, you know, I'm wow, this is this is a wonder. This is, you know, really something for me to consider. And it's open and open them up to to different ideas and different concepts and different ways of looking at the world. And they're, you know, how, how we all are. And then, you know, just the, the wisdom of taking steps to, to do better, you know, like things you talk about all the time. What type of changes and just give some instances or some story, what type of changes have you seen people make after they have had that wow moment like you? Oh, they, they, like I say, become more conscious. They, they think, they, they think before they speak, they look for reasons to feel good as opposed to reasons to complain. And they don't share their complaints so much. Instead, they share the good stuff. And that's what I love. And, and with working with corporate, what I've seen has happened is it changes the whole dynamic because people start to, to, because they're making that shift within themselves, it of course affects all their colleagues, it affects their employers, it affects their customers, and ultimately it improves the bottom line. People are happier. That makes sense. You've written several books. Well, your... I've written, I've contributed. Okay, and you've got one coming out. Uh, I have one that I've written. I, I've got one that I've compiled. Can I show it here? Actually, I don't know if you yeah, can yeah. see it. So this so, is called, whoops, Live Life and Wow. Cool. It's an anthology that I compiled with 14 other authors and the stories in it are wonderful. And they're all 100% true stories. And they all have a summary of what the wow is. And we invite our readers to get in touch with the authors. If they liked it, we, we've actually put contact information in the book Good. for people to reach out and have conversations with the authors. How do we get access to the book? Well, it's definitely on Amazon. Okay. So people can go to Amazon, but better yet, if I may, I'd like to offer something to your listeners, if I could, Keith. What, what, what? Yeah, go ahead. Well, if they, when they listen to your episode and if they reach out to me on LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn. Or if they like, they can just email me and I will give them a free complimentary, I guess I should say, digital version of the book. Which has a retail value of what? Uh, $19.95. Okay. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. If, they, if they're interested about, you know, learning some of these stories in, in the book are just fascinating. The one about a Ponzi scheme where someone was taken in by a Ponzi scheme and how they overcame that. Um, one where someone was like 10 feet away from elephants and huge 
uh, animals in the in in, the, in Africa, and like so close that he could feel the breath. And yeah, the stories are are pretty pretty amazing. One in there about Jane Fonda and camp that when been written. Yeah, there's quite a variety. There's something for everybody, and it's lots of fun. One last question before we end this call. I want to know. That thing, I know it was a wow moment for you, but I just want to dive deep into your psyche just a bit. Why? Why was it so important for you to make that change once you saw what your thoughts were giving you? What did you want to change in your life? I I changed a whole lot about my life. My life completely turned around. I changed relationships. I changed how I looked at myself, I dove deeper into what I thought about myself and why, why was I holding myself back mm. from things? It was almost like I had all this drive to do things, but I had the brakes on. It's like I was stepping on the gas pedal and the emergency brake was on and I was not going anywhere. So and that's actually led me to the book that I'm writing now of my own called The Bully Lives Within. So that was, it was, it was a catalyst for huge change for me as I, as it has been. And it's, it's really propelled me to, to want to share what I've learned with others just because I want other people to feel good. And Deborah, we need to have those conversations. We need to have people make those changes because a lot of us live in really dark places. Uh, I know because I've been there. But for right now, everybody who is watching and listening, her contact information is in the description of this video or the show notes. Please get in touch with Deborah ha uh, Hollick. Sorry. And this has been another edition of Coach's Corner. I'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks, Keith.